Hey guys, Akil Mohudin here, and welcome back to another video. If you're a consistent watcher of my channel, then you know that I've built my own computer. We took a CPU, RAM, GPU, motherboard, and hard drives, and built this amazing, amazingly performing uh, computer for around $650. But then I began to wonder, like, how do all those individual components work? I mean, how does the CPU manage to calculate hundreds and thousands of data and equations in seconds, in milliseconds? And how does it make stuff that pops on the screen pop them on the screen? Well, if you want to know or you want to just build your own CPU out of transistors, then welcome to Let's Make a CPU Part 1. If you plan on making one, then you're going to need a few materials. I'm automatically assuming that you already have a breadboard and some sort of 5 volt power supply. So other than that, you're going to need some NPN transistors, and you can get about a hundred of them like this for like five bucks. Then you're going to need some 1K resistors like this, um, also five dollars. The resistor code is brown, black, red. Then you're going to need some 10K resistors such as this, and the resistor code for that is brown, black, orange. Then you're going to need some green LEDs because this is going to be your output or you can just choose any LEDs. The ones I have here are green, and this is gonna cost you also like five bucks for like 50. The last thing you need here is some jumpers. I forget how much these cost, but they come in like 50 packs. If you plan on building the whole thing, I would recommend getting about 100 to 150 at least. So you need these four things. Um, once you get that, your breadboard and power supply, you should be fine. Power supply, remember, should be five volt. This is how you draw a transistor, where this is the collector, this is the base, and this is the emitter. The way you use it is the collector goes to your power supply, which is in our case 5 volts, and the base goes through a 10k resistor to a switch and then to the power supply. And then the emitter goes to an LED out to ground. The reason we have this switch here is to control the voltage. So when we press the switch down or we turn the circuit on, then voltage from the collector flows to the emitter, to the LED, turning it on, and then out to ground. So I can turn the switch on by connecting this jumper to VCC. I'm allowing voltage to flow from VCC into the 10K resistor and then into the middle lag or pin B, the base, of the transistor which then puts the transistor into the one state which lets current flow from VCC into the yellow wire through to the collector and then out to the emitter, out to the LED and then to ground which turns the LED on. And remember to always put a 10K resistor between the gate and VCC. 10K resistor, the resistor code is brown, black, orange. That's 10 kilo ohm. Because if you don't and you just connect the gate straight up to your switch which goes to VCC, voltage will become so high in the gate that it flows straight from the gate, that current flows straight from the gate right into the LED. Without anything being connected to the collector. See how nothing is in the collector? It's just because it's flowing straight from the gate to the LED and the color of the LED is yellow rather than being green. It's a green LED, but the color is yellow, which means that the current is so high in the LED, it's causing it to become oversaturated. That'll burn out your LED, and it'll also burn out your transistor. So always remember, 10K resistor between the gate and VCC. Obviously, that isn't exactly how a CPU does everything that it does, but there are still a lot of parts in this video series to come. Next up, we'll talk about the binary system, which works entirely off ones and zeros, and it's the language that computers use in order to calculate everything that they do. So if you're excited about this video series, then like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Bye.